Hello everyone, this is Ram from CrossMind Studio and today we are going to create a delightful animation scene. It's a straightforward and enjoyable animation project, perfect for beginners who are looking for their next assignment right after completing the introduction series. The best part about this tutorial is that it covers a bit of animation, rigging, skinning, IK constraints, and other fundamental aspects needed to prepare a character for animation. Instead of delving too deeply into each subject, we'll focus on essentials, giving you an overview that keeps you engaged without overwhelming you with excessive details. It's just enough to spark your curiosity and raise your awareness about these topics and uh, might be your first time doing animation. So yeah, just think about a name for your character and uh, let's dive right in. The scene we will be crafting revolves around this character, Delete Key, on a path of destruction, relentlessly breaking other keys. As you can see, there's a bit of story going on around this character. So from the 3D modeling perspective and beyond, everything remains relatively simple. It's not much different from the level we covered in beginner's introduction series. However, the animation in this project diverges from the airplane animation we previously explored. It focuses on character animation rather than mechanical animation. So although it may appear straightforward, it still incorporates fundamental principles of character animation. So do not underestimate the potential of this delete key. It, it may open the doors to further curiosity for you. Without further delay, let's jump right into it. Now let's jump to Blender and select this default cube, go to the front view. By pressing tab, go to the edit mode and I'm going to select this front face and scale it down like this to give it some taper. Now select all the faces with A and press S and Z to scale it up like this. Now this key appears way too thicker. Our character will be standing so this is front of the key. So I'm going to move this inside, press G and Y and make it slightly slimmer. Now select all the faces and press Ctrl B and give it some working radius, a bevel about two edges. Now the front face appears flat. Now if you notice the keyboard, there's a slight curvature. So depending on the kind of shape you're going for, press Ctrl R and add about five edges here to have sort of symmetry, two here, two here, one in the center five vertically and now i'm going to select these four faces press three on keyboard to, to enable the face mode and enable the proportionate editing by pressing o and press g y and move it inside like this now i'm going to reduce the radius to only affect certain part and this much should be enough on your right click there should be shade smooth and uh, yeah, press Ctrl 1 and this should add a subdivision surface. So this will appear more like a keyboard key once we add some text here. So let's add some text by pressing Shift A and bring our text here. Go to the edit mode by pressing Tab and type DEL. Press Tab again. Now go to the side view and move it here. Press R to rotate this, minus 90 degrees, and move it right in front of your keyboard key. Go to the front view, align it with your character, your key. But since we, we are going to make some eyes here, eye sockets, for that reason, I'm going to place this key here. Now to add some eyes here, I'm going to select this keyboard key again, press tab. Let me disable this modifier for now. Let's select these eight faces at the center and press I to insert. Now I'm going to select these four edges. I can press two on the keyboard to enable the edge mode. Three, two, one, edge faces and vertices. Now SX to add some sort of a radial form formation to this eye socket. So this is going to be our eye socket. Now with these inner faces selected, I'm going to press E and uh, move it inwards like this. And I think if I enable my modifier again, 
subdivision surface, this should look like an eye socket. Now I'm going to enable this on cage so I can see wireframe in my editing mode. I think this vertically looks way too big. I'm going to scale this down like this slightly. All right, and don't forget to save your file. Now let's go to the front view again. Click here and bring one. I think UV sphere should be fine. RX90 to rotate this one in 90 degrees. SY to scale this in Y direction. So instead of uh, making a flat circle here, I just wanted eyes to have some glass. So for that, I have added this sphere instead of just a flat circle and uh, make a duplicate of this again. Now all we need to do is add some legs here. Let's add one cylinder, mesh, cylinder, reduce the vertices to eight and go to the edit mode, select top face and delete this one. Select all the top edges by pressing Alt and move it up like this. So just making it vertically taller. Now select all the faces in edit mode, scale it down and align it here. Press Ctrl A, all transforms so that the origin goes right to the center and I'm going to apply one mirror modifier to this. Now in the edit mode, I'm going to add a few more loops, about five here, so that when we add bones, we can bend these properly. Maybe add two loops here for a smooth transition. All right, press Ctrl 1 to make this smooth. On your right click or special context menu, there should be shade smooth. And uh, in edit mode, simply press Ctrl B and bevel this and give it smooth round shape. That's it. Keep it simple. All right, so I think our character is ready. Now let's add some colors to this. Now, before we move on to the animation part, I want to add some colors to this so that uh, we have some exciting visual in front of us instead of these gray cubes. So first thing first, let's make sure that you are using EV. Uh, actually, this, this should work both the engines. But for now, let me explain a few things. Let's jump to cycles render engine and reduce your samples to maybe just for the preview purpose and make sure you have denoiser enabled. Save your file and jump to preview. So at this moment, it's all black, just this default light shining on this. So first thing first, let's add some environment texture. Go to the shader editor. In the world section, press N to hide this plane. So we have this new world and uh, background for our environment and here add one environment texture from the open menu load any of the hdri my favorite is this one courtyard press ctrl t if you have node wrangler enabled from the add-ons menu i think i like lights coming from the backside so i'm going to just flip it backwards so let's add one ground plane. And move it downwards. So for the main character here, I'm going to select this, go to the object in shader editor and make a new material called key. Make this one black and that's about it. Select the legs add the same material and save your file again. Now I'm going to select this cube, go to the edit menu and uh, select all the internal faces of the eye socket and press Ctrl plus to expand the selection. Now here I'm going to add another material from the material properties here. Just click on add material slot, add a new material and assign. That's it. Now exit the edit mode by pressing tab and the same material should go on the eyes as well. 
if you have multiple objects you can just select them and select the main body and press ctrl l and link material that will transfer the material as well so with this text selected let's add a new material and make it a simple white with little less roughness let's go to the 3d viewport now by pressing 5 on keyboard from the number pad you can jump to the orthographic view and perspective view let's select this text and uh, make sure it's aligned to our object so yeah let's enable the shadow from our viewport shading now you can see there is a slight gap here so to reduce that we can simply select the text go to the modifier panel and add one shrink wrap now target this main body here and this should deform based on the shape of this mesh here you can offset this one by slight number maybe 0 0.01 yeah i'm going to hit the render now here now if you zoom in you'll see this text is casting shadow on a, on the main key body now to make this appear as if this is a printed text on this main body i'm going to disable the shadow in the in the object properties here scroll down in the visibility section ray visibility disable the shadow and disable the glossy so that there are no reflections as well that's it so i think we are done with the character now let's jump to the second task which is going to be basic rig to animate this character we are just going to add some bones to the legs now if any of you would be interested in uh, rendering this with ev you can simply jump to ev now this is going to be your default render in ev so to make this a slightly better render you can uh, enable the ambient occlusion and increase this number to add some soft shadow now here in the uh, in the viewport shading you can enable the scene light and scene world so now it's using the same light that we have in environment and the light that we have in the scene now if you go back to cycles this will become a cycle viewport but the viewport shading right here it's still using the ev engine and the ambient occlusion and all that that we set up in the render mode when this was set to ev so now you have both of render engines preview this is ev and this is cycles so for now we are going to work with ev uh, to have better performance so i'm going to hide the ground plane all right so let's move to the next exciting part and we are going to do a bit of rigging just enough to add some deformation to these legs that's all so it's going to be pretty simple rig now first thing let's make sure you're in object mode and press shift a bring one armature press alt g to center this in the world center where our character is in the default position now move this downwards right here go to the edit mode and here we are in edit mode of this armature now here you can scale bones make more bones out of it and do all sort of things now with the top link selected i'm going to move this downwards in z direction so this is going to be our hip controller with the top link selected press e and z to move it outwards like an extrusion use simple transformation commands so this is sort of a spine of the character now select the bottom so the upper bone is linked to this lower bone so select all the bones move it right at the center where the hip is supposed to be all right now select this bone or any of the bone press shift d align this here so on your right click or a special context menu you have this uh, switch direction so now this is facing downwards so make sure these points are aligned just like imagine bones in your legs basically align this point to the center of the knee and create a new extrusion move it downwards and uh, if you create an extrusion and it's sort of shaky and moving here and there just press z to snap it to that particular axis go to the side view and uh, select the center and uh, move it slightly outwards just like leg basically the formation of the leg now with the last link selected press e and uh, just make sort of a tiny foot even though we don't have any here go to the side view 
and uh, select this center link right between this and this sort of like an anchor and press extrude press e and move it in y direction backwards so this should appear like an anchor so this is not going to be a bone but a controller for this legs movement now select the upper bone and the hip press ctrl p and make this parent keep offset now as soon as i do that you can see a relationship line appear here so that means this bone the thighs are connected to the hips so now you select all of these bones and press shift d and mirror it right here basically this i'm doing manually but in uh, proper rigging there are many more things which needs to be done properly for a rig to work in details like naming the left side and the right side of the body properly and uh, the angles of the bones and many more things but keep in mind this chapter is not about rigging it's not about animation but at the same time for beginners we are going to be touching these subjects just to make this little animation so even though you won't be learning rigging or animation in that much of a depth like a dedicated course or anything but at the same time you sort of get curious about these things like how all of these especially if you are a beginner you have never done this before you will see how the bone meshes skinning and the armature and the ik all that comes together and makes this animation so so we are keeping it fun and light without overboarding you with information whatever is necessary for today that's all we are going to do all right so when we made the copy on the right side the relationship line is copied as well these are still linked now if you press Control tab you'll see there are three different sections for the armature one is the object mode where you create bones if you press Control tab again you will see the pose mode and edit mode edit mode is where we we were creating bones and modifying the alignments and in the pose mode you add constraints and make animations so here you have these three modes all right so now in pose mode you'll see a new icon appeared here in edit mode you don't have any of the constraints but in pose mode you have this constraint icon now what we are going to do is select this leg the right lower leg and click on add bone constraint and click on inverse kinematic as soon as i do that a relationship line appears here that means a chain have been created which is inverse kinematic now if you move this bone the entire armature is sort of moving it's it sort of looks like a limb but at the same time it's not working properly that's because the limits are not assigned to this so in the chain length if you limit this to these two bones one and two you'll see this orange line now is only reaching till the upper thighs hip that means this chain is only going to if you move it in z direction upwards it's going to move it like a knee the leg basically so i don't know about you guys like when first time i learned this subject added bones and added ik chain and this knee started moving i was so excited the entire day all i did was just make bones make knees legs move that's all so that was pretty big thing for me anyways so let's do the same thing for this one select the lower leg inverse kinematic set the chain length to 2 move this upwards and we have other knee working as well now in the pose mode if you select this hip and move it downwards you would expect this character to sit down basically the knees should bend that should happen and that's what we are going to do next now what's happening is all of these bones and everything are basically part of uh, are being controlled by this because if you remember we made these uh, links here so this is parented to this this one is parented to this so what if we select these two ankle bones these are not actually ankle bones we made these for a controller purpose now if you go to the edit mode and press alt p to clear the parent disconnect these bones clear parent now go back to the pose mode again now these two bones are not moving with this entire armature now now first thing let's uh, 
sorry i forgot to rename these select the left foot controller this one and uh, rename this one left leg ik controller all right right leg ik control now go back to the pose mode go to the constraints click on the target target the target this armature and click on the bone so this is left leg ik click here and now if i select this controller and move it this controller even though it's not part of this armature it's sort of controlling our ik now let's do the same thing for this one target this armature entire thing right leg ik control all right so i think we are done with this now if you go back to the pose mode and you start moving this hip the character is starting to sit down and that's that's good that means everything whatever we have done so far is working now in the object mode press shift a and uh, create this empty object where is it empty and click on q place it anywhere doesn't matter and uh, now select the armature again go to the pose mode and here in bone properties you'll see viewport display custom shape custom object select this hip bone and click on custom object and click on this empty so now this shape have been replaced by with this this is just for the convenience that in all that mess you you should be easily able to select the hip so i think this default was good so now i'm going to select the these two bones select and click on this empty so you can simply right click on this and copy to select it and now you have both of these joints the controllers replaced with the empties dummy objects so you can uh, scale this down or press alt and uh, while scaling this down hit alt that is going to work on both all right so the rigging part is done congratulations your first rig trust me even though this is not complicated you have sort of grasp the basic concept of rigging so this is sort of like your chapter one and two creating bones creating constraints creating custom shape for the controller these are essentials now in the last part we are going to add skinning to this character so that it moves up into these bones now before we do that let's apply these modifiers press ctrl a to apply the mirror modifier and uh, yeah that's all now select these legs and select the armature with shift press ctrl p now you'll see when we have armature selected your parent menu is slightly more detailed you have lots of stuff going on that that has to do with bones and weights so if you select with automatic weights and now select the armature go to the pose mode you'll see when i move the leg the knees are sort of bending and everything is working fine so since this is such a simple object you don't really need to do a manual weight painting or anything now if i move the hip part all the legs he's starting to sort of uh, do this dance okay so so far so good let's select this upper body and select this armature now first select this armature and go to the edit mode and select this one this upper bone all right and exit the edit mode all right now if you select this cube and select this armature now since we have this upper bone selected in the edit mode what will happen if i press ctrl p and do the bone relative go to the pose mode if you move this bone you'll see this entire mesh being linked to this one bone just to cross check move the other bone nothing is working on this one select the hip yeah so our character is done now keep in mind why i used automatic weight here and the bone relative here just in case if you're curious since this mesh is being deformed with multiple links of bones it's not that one bone is bending this it's like this much of the mesh is being controlled with this bone this much of mesh is being controlled with this bone all right so there's a weight being uh, used for every bone on this mesh for this to sort of uh, create this transition at the center and everything for all that to work 
we had to use weight uh, automatic weights this upper body is just one chunk and if this was a human spine or something then or there were multiple links if you want to deform the upper, upper body as well create more links and you automatic weight here as well but in our case bone relative simple parenting is going to work just fine all right that's what we needed for this so enough chit chat bring back the ground plane again if you're feeling excited just do a bit of dance move it around just just take a break you're done a lot moving on to the next part which is going to be animation so buckle up this would need a little more attention i'm going to rename this character let's call this Dell character just to have a better preview in the pose mode select all these bones and uh, go to the armature section this one object data properties and in the viewport display you have display as option here now here you can simply select sticks and this instead of those junky bones now the bones would appear as if these were simple lines so much more clearer in viewport now we are ready for animation now for this animation i'm going to reduce this timeline length to 23 so one thing i forgot to mention uh, bring the curve bring it right in the center bring it closer to the foot controller and select your armature and parent with this one so now del control now your entire character is parented to this one controller so it's easy to relocate this character anywhere else you want now let's select this and uh, the ground plane and move it above the grid just in case it's always a good practice all right so let's uh, select this armature go to the pose mode and uh, bring the timeline here first thing we are going to do is set a key for all of these controllers to the default state press i location and rotation so we have a key for all of these three things you can shift d make a duplicate of this key so now the entire timeline have the same animation right at the center select this one the hip controller so let's figure out the animation first so the character is standing here on another key that we are going to make in a bit this character is going to jump upwards and then come back on the ground and then stand a little bit of follow through animation so first let's just make this jump move it upwards like this press i location and rotation and select these two as well and move it like this so a little bit of jump basically jumping so if you don't want to press i every time and uh, set a key for location and rotation you can simply select this keying set and whichever keys are available at this moment only those type of keys will be set every time you press i so if i press i here like press i here so it's going to set location and rotation key because based on the history of this timeline all right so so now we have this animation so technically this is jump but now let's add some more life to it start thinking about from animation point of view use your body wherever you're sitting just stand up and uh, and think about jumping a bit so if you observe before you jump you sort of make a stance anticipation so before you jump let's say for three or four frames i'm going to select these three controllers and duplicate the same key so on this keyframe, I'm going to make this anticipation pose. This character sort of bends down its knees. Press I. Now slightly more. So it's it's better than before, but we can use more. Now the second thing, if you observe from the extreme pose, when you are in air, you come back down on floor. Yes, your body sort of uh, with all that force when you land on floor you bend down and you recover from that pose to a normal pose before the last pose let's select all these three controllers and uh, you select this key and one two three about four four keyframes before that you copy the same pose so right here this character would be slightly more bent 
basically landing from a jump so the knees are still taking in all that force press i but what's happening right now is that these legs start to bend right before it even landed so that shouldn't happen so what we are going to do is for these two legs we are going to make another key right before it touches the ground right here and straighten these legs press i you can feel a slight impact going on here so right here i'm going to move these two keys uh, because i feel right after the impact the animation is too slow so just one key and now right after it takes off basically it jumps right here we can add one more key where the legs are straight so this is the basic animation now we can start working on details we can uh, add more life to it so especially the upper body is not moving at all and uh, we can break the symmetry one important thing right here this right here at the center this key reaches the extreme pose highest point in the jump right about here it's called hang time uh, when the body starts to react to the gravity it can no longer escape the gravity so it a few frames where it would appear floating in the air before landing down before the gravity pulls you back here it's going to be hang time about four or six frames so what we are going to do is select these two legs right here on frame number eight with all that anticipation and the push the character have jumped but now this is the parent and this is the child so think about it so the the child bone is always going to follow the parent bone so if there is any motion in the parent bone the transfer of the motion there is a slight delay uh, if you observe any of the physical objects let's take uh, the part of the body which is deriving the motion is always going to lead and the rest of the the linked things let's say your hair your arm your legs is always following your hips so if you're uh, sort of running and you suddenly stop your legs and uh, your hip will stop first and your legs and arms are going to sway slightly forward and then settle back down so that's the thing right here the upper body is the hip and everything is where the all the force leading forces so child is just following these two have no clue what's going to happen in next two frames so right about here this parent bone have stopped because of the gravity because of that delay in information these child uh, controllers will still be pushing upwards like this press i actually move it here sorry move it right here let's break the symmetry and right here as well we are going to have these bent knees all right so right after the anticipation pose it jumps so this part upper body is starting to fall down but the legs st still carrying the same motion uh, all that force from the upper body so you can still bend it upwards fold it and then suddenly there should be instant change In the pose you can break the symmetry again press i and add one more frame for the hold maybe one or two frames one frame should be enough so i'm just trying to break the symmetry as much as possible you can enable auto key from here if you don't want to set keys manually every time
if I move this controller slightly on the side, then knee is going to move outwards. So just trying to break the symmetry here, do the same thing. All right, so now to add more weight to this animation, we are going to use the upper body. The starting pose, we have this anticipation pose. Select the upper body bone. Let's set the same key, one on, uh, let's go to the keying set and uh, click on this cross available because we don't have any key for this. Uh, set one key for location and rotation for this bone as well. Now uh, we have this anticipation pose here. Select the upper bone in the X direction, turn this forward. Now you can select the available keying set. Let's add some more sort of uh, weight to it. So in the anticipation pose, we have this character leaning forward. So right after the anticipation, when it takes off character sort of jumps, we can set it back to the default position or a slight rotation forward, set a key. And then in the extreme one, the center key right before that we can have the same copy of the key sorry for this upper body let's copy the same key so this position carries forward slightly more rotation and here at the center right after it reaches the maximum height the character starts to look downwards where it's about to land so usual instincts so press x x in local direction character looks downwards press i and it follows the same pose r x x slightly more press i the same pose carries till here the impact right after the impact when the knees sort of bend mm, do i have a key for it I think I had these keys for legs before the impact. This is a uh, follow through and uh, this right here is impact. So I think if I make a key right about here, so because of the impact, the head sort of uh, leans forward with force, head I, and then it settles back down to default position you can copy the same key at the end now right here i feel i can add some more weight so i'm just going to push this downwards and uh, move it aside the feet so that the knees are pointing outwards press i Now here I feel the knees are bending way too sooner, uh, way too quickly. I think if I move these, change this pose to slightly more stretched, this will be slightly more gradual transition. Now here in the anticipation pose, I can have a little more rotation. And now for the, let's hide the ground plane. And now here, one more observation is that right before it reaches the ground, it doesn't feel that impactful because the legs are not stretched to max. I think right here, legs should be stretched out like this. Like you're about to land and uh, you sort of uh, reach the ground. Let's keep track of the ground where it is. Yeah, this looks much better. And the last thing, break the symmetry more in, in terms of uh, in the upper body, we can uh, use some rotation to break the symmetry. Now here in the anticipation, what if we sort of, if this character leans one side, just make sure nothing is on the right angles. So a little bit of 
variation that's it so not the best animation but i think we got what we wanted and uh, there is one more thing i would like to add here is the second character just to add a little story to this entire animation oh one thing i forgot completely these eyes could add some animation to this as well keying set press i location rotation and scale so this character is sort of looking downwards maybe actually we can start from our default position what if we move it upwards like this here character is looking upwards and right before the jump it looks downwards sorry about the confusion yeah right here it looks downwards in y direction let's work without order please so here i'm just experimenting so i think this is fine character is looking downwards and we move it slightly more upwards impact frame we can scale it up like this and the next frame we can scale these down like this and then recover copy the same frame right here all right and about this right here this main object what you can do is go to the object data properties and go to the shape keys this is the basic shape key and add another one call this one frown now in the edit mode if you have a proportion in editing enabled what you can do is in the first pose first key where char character is straight right here you make a pose where character is sort of frowning all right so oops, sorry about the auto key just disable the auto key and uh, so you have this frowning shape key which you can use for animation all right you can uh, make uh, another key in object mode call this blink go to the edit mode and see if you can uh, make this character blink All right so let's see if we can add some more value to this let's set the key press i here it gets angry here set it back to zero and yeah no more keys here default at the end just a little a little bit of expression you can try something more extreme if you want blink we can use right right after the impact so set a key here let's move this key here and right here we can uh, do a sort of a half blink and uh, we can also use this in anticipation set one key here when character is sort of jumping now the last thing ground plane and in this plane, we are going to copy the same character. Let's make a duplicate of this character. Remove the parent, Alt P, clear parent. In this ground plane, if I go to the geometry node editor, click on new and bring one Boolean, mesh, mesh Boolean. Now this key, we can call this one enter select the ground plane again if i drag enter key here now we can extract uh, we can boolean this one from the ground hold tolerant relative yeah click on relative and uh, bring a transform node and place it right in the middle of enter key and this mesh boolean and scale it up like this so basically what's happening is there's a copy of this key which we are subtracting from this plane that's it yeah you can click on you can disable this whole tolerant and bring one extrude mesh node and set the height to 0.01 or something yeah that's still too deep 0.001 
now if i go to the edit mode for this enter key let's go back to the viewport 3d so basically we want to increase the length of this key usually if you look at the keyboard enter key is slightly longer in shape that's it oops i think uh when i change the shape it was happening in one of the shape key if i go to the basic this should work now if we take uh the same sort of eyes make a duplicate alt p clear parent so now that we have a little bit of story around our character let's select these eyes parent to this enter key make a copy of this delete and press alt p clear parent disable this modifier align this right at the top of this mesh right here if i go to the edit mode and type enter that should work parent this one to this object so now all we need to do is add a bit of animation to this character enable the auto key so let's add one key here oops keying set move it down make sure it's touching the feet that's all copy the same key here and uh, right here right after the character takes off you can move this key a little bit upwards it's like there was a little bit of weight because of that it, it was pressed inside copy the same key all the way till here after the impact it's pressed a little bit more and then comes back a little after this character recovers if you want to add some details to eyes what you can do is select both of these set one key this character is looking towards this main character all right right here we can add another key eyes move slightly more towards the character here it's following the character and the eyes become big with fear and follow copy the same key all the way till here actually move it here we can copy this key where eyes were normal during the impact so eyes could become a slightly more bigger here here right here after the impact eyes could go like this and then recover again all right and since we already had keys uh, shape keys on this one we should have the same here let's delete this key uh, from make a new one worried move this point to x direction like this and move these two like this yep so here right about when the character is right in the middle of the jump this i right before this character is about to land this character gets worried and scared for life and here what we can do is make a blink key blink that's it so that's all i did for uh, the final animation let's add some vibrant color to this ground plane so exactly the same thing here's the final file that i have for preview so exactly the same thing let's render this out i'm using the same hdr in the background as i suggested and uh, materials are pretty simple exactly the same principle bsdf with basic values and on the ground plane i have this yellow color vibrant one 
all right and uh, 50 sample uh, 128 samples are used for the rendering because we don't have any textures we shouldn't notice any artifacts even with with this little samples so let's hit render one twenty eight samples and uh, it took about five seconds to render so if you're using r t x three zero seven zero these are the benchmarks if you're using lower end graphic card three zero six zero even then max to max this should like take fifteen seconds or something this is such a simple basic animations and cycles is pretty fast and if you're interested in e v render you can simply switch to e v and uh, both are pretty identical in this in this case so if i bring the ev preview here you can see any of these look would look nice if you render render it out the only difference is the global illumination you can fake that a little bit with lighting you can simply bring one area light here and bounce it off so that's about it for this tutorial here you can see in the background i try to add a little bit of more story this little character is on the path of destruction destroying the other keys on the keyboard so feel free to make more exciting animations make a loop make more story around it do any kind of thing you want and if you are a beginner jumping to this tutorial right after the introduction series i think this is a pretty good tutorial for you here you get to know more things like how the things work animation um the bones rigging and all that it's like a quick overview for you in this little fun tutorial without getting in uh, all that complex details now that you know how the bones work how the rigging works where these these things are in blender so in future when you watch any complex tutorial so you have sort of a background in your head so you won't be lost later when you discover these topics all right so for now just enjoy your uh, this little animation and render it out don't forget to share it on instagram tag me with instacross mind drop it on discord server as well so yeah thanks for tuning in any of you interested in files links are in the description and for those of you who have stumbled upon this chapter randomly and haven't really cleared the basics of blender you can check out the series the introduction to blender and uh, this will get you through all the basic essential things get that out of the way jump to this tutorial have fun with it so thank you take care bye bye have a great weekend <laughs>